Hello, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Chiz, my pronouns are they, she, and I do things on here sometimes. So I posted about this necklace on my TikTok the other day and a lot of you were asking me if I had any tips on how to make jewelry like this. And my answer to that is this video. Some people also asked me if I had a shop. The answer to that is I am working on it right now. I'm actually going to make a necklace for my shop as a demo or a sort of tutorial at the end of this video so stick around for that if you're interested this is probably going to be the bulk of the video because the first half is just some tips that i have for you on starting to make jewelry so i'm going to get into that right now the first and most important thing that you should have in my opinion is some wire when i first got wire i didn't even like know that i needed it until i got it like it is so helpful like you can turn anything into a charm with wire so I definitely recommend you get wire. I got the 16 gauge one, like just because my like piercings are 16 gauge and I thought that like I could make piercing jewelry or something, I don't know. I do recommend getting like probably an 18 because it's thinner and like easier to manipulate, but this one's still like 16 gauge is still pretty solid. And um, yeah, you could turn anything to a charm with this. The second tip that I have for you is just pick up things. Like if you see something cool on the ground, just pick it up. Preferably metallic things. Um, some things that I have used, for example, on this necklace, which I'm not done yet, but um, I have safety pin. Um, I have this key, or actually I have two keys that I don't know what they're the key to. Um, I have these soda tabs. I picked this one up from the floor, I know, because it's so scratchy. Uh, but I, I saved this one from like some soda that I drank this is a headlight from my car um it went out so when they changed it out i was like this thing's pretty cool and it has a convenient little hole right here and i was like i could totally use this uh, to make jewelry of some kind and this is a nail yeah just pick up stuff the third tip that i have is to you have pliers up until today i had this one hand dandy set of wire cutters that I obtained from the electronics lab at my school but I went to the market today and I bought a second pair of pliers and now I have two and it's gonna make my life so much easier pliers pliers are awesome pliers are are good to like take things apart put them back together pliers are awesome I don't really have much to say they're just you'll see the next thing you're definitely definitely gonna need are jump rings so um i don't have any free jump rings actually they kind of all spilled in my bag i still have some but they're like these things and you can use your handy dandy pliers to pull them apart and you can put them together to make like chain of your own or you can use them to attach things like i use them here i use them hold on there's one of these spikes that i really use them for i use them here to like attach and make this like longer and a little different than the others and i use them to make this chain i'm gonna be taking them apart because i don't know why i did this jump rings in combination with wire you can make anything reality can be whatever you want tip number five i think is regarding like beads and other stuff because all the stuff i've talked about is like charms and like just other stuff so now i'm gonna talk about beads and other other stuff what i do is i went to the market today and I picked up a bunch of old jewelry that I will be recycling. Um, these are so pretty and I have so many plans. You're probably not gonna use all the beads or whatever. Like, I don't think I'm ever gonna use this like thing, um, but I bought this one for the charm. Like this little birdhouse charm is super cute and it's all like together and falling apart. But uh, that's what we want. We wanna break it apart and make new stuff. I recommend going to thrift stores and buying like old jewelry that has like cool beads that you think you can use for other stuff. Because I know that like at craft stores, beads can be expensive, at least to me. Um, they're probably not that expensive. I'm probably just like, I don't have a lot of money to spend, but this is way cheaper for me and it, you can find more unique stuff that way. And on old jewelry, you can find clasps that you wouldn't normally have like like this type of clasp. I haven't bought a single clasp like, in my life. And I've just been able to pull them apart with my pliers and use them on new jewelry that I make. And you can also recycle like the chains that they use. Like you can use like this chain, just attach it with jump ring. And now you have like a little necklace extender. I did that on this necklace. Like I just took this piece 
and like added it right there. And that made the necklace longer without me having to like chain up a bunch of jump rings. I know you can buy a chain that's already like linked, so that's also probably a good idea, but I have never done that. Something else that you're probably gonna need if you want to like, you know, have like matching sets is a bunch of like earring hooks. They're pretty cheap and they're very easy to use. They have a little loopy loop at the end and you can attach a jump ring to it and anything's an earring. Ah, the world is your earring, look. You just attach your jump ring and attach it to your charm and you have an earring. These earring ba these fish hook earrings are super awesome. I got them at Michael's and I got, they're like 180 pieces and they're not that expensive. I, I think it was $6, but it was 180 pieces and I try not to think about it too much. The last and probably the most important tip that I have, I think, is look at jewelry that you like. Look at jewelry online from shops that you like or on Pinterest and just try to look at what they do. Like try to look at what they, I don't know, try to look at what they do. Or if you have any jewelry that you like, like physically that you can touch, it would be better to just look at it and like try to tear it apart or like not tear it apart, but just try to see what they use. Like I personally always used to wonder like, how do they join these things? And then I went to the craft store and I saw jump rings and something just like clicked in my head. I was like, oh, the possibilities they're endless um like looking at this this is something that i bought i haven't done anything to this i i figured out that how they attach the bead is they put wire through it and they bend the wire like i didn't know that before so like there's all these things um that you can learn just by looking at jewelry that you want to make uh something similar to and just trying to disassemble it with your eyes and like just try to figure out how it was made those are all the tips that I have, but don't leave because I am about to make a necklace. I'm about to make a watch necklace, in fact, um, out of this clock face, watch face, whatever, that I bought at the market today. It has a little green secondhand thing going on, so I'm definitely going to incorporate green stuff. And I'm super excited to do something with it and to also show you guys, so... The first thing that I like to do is to pick out the beads and charms that I would like to use. Since we have this green secondhand thing going on, I picked out a bunch of jewelry that had green elements and also some that had neutral colors like white or silver. All right, now that I've selected the jewelry from which I wanna use some beads, let's get started. So first order of business is to make a charm out of this watch to see how we're going to base everything else off of. How I'm going to do that is this watch face has like little hole here where the straps used to be and the hole actually goes all the way through which is awesome so I'm going to put this through like this and then use my handy dandy pliers to twist them I hope this is clear on the camera uh, into a little loop-de-loop -loop, right so you want the little loop-de-loop -loop so you can connect your jump ring to it or Whatever, so yeah, I'm going to do this on the other side, but first I'm going to cut the wire. And the fun thing about wire cutters is there's a wire cutter right there. Um, I didn't know that, so don't be an idiot like me. Um, I hope that's enough. If not, I will cry. Sick. Awesome and perfect. So I'm going to do this for the other side. The next thing that I like to do is to make the charms or like set up little bead sequences so i'm going to start taking off the um the beads that i will use specifically this part is pretty mindless and therapeutic so i recommend throwing on a youtube video or a podcast this time i threw on a rabbit this took me about 20 or 25 minutes to do after selecting the ones that i wanted i just cleaned up a little bit so that i would have a somewhat clear workspace the next thing that I like to do is to try to just, like, organize the beads. I'm trying to figure out what order, like, looks good. So I'm going to try to, like, just experiment with um, different things. Try not to get too hung up on this part. Um, nothing is set in stone, and you can always change this. So don't be too, like, fixated on this. All right, now that I have a rough idea of, like, kind of what I want to do, I'm going to put stuff on like short wires. I'm going to put like a string of beads 
So starting with this one, um, I like the way it's arranged, so I'm going to put it on the wire. Now that it's all on the wire, I'm going to make it have little loops like I did for the watch. Um, I like to leave it on the wire and cut it at the last possible second or like moment so that I can save wire. So I think this much is going to be fine. Okay, that's one. I decided that I want to do like some lone beads, so um, just some by themselves. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Make sure it's like closed so your jump ring doesn't fall out. And I think this much is going to be enough, so cut and I twist. Nice, one bead. For the safety pin, I... I could use jump rings on both sides, so I'm not going to do anything with that. And then I kind of just have to intuitively do the rest. Alright, so I'm going to keep doing this until I have enough pieces, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have a lot of the stuff that I want um, so far, in terms of like, the beading only. So I wanted to show you um, how I made my spikes into little charms. Um, these spikes are screw back spikes. So they have this thing and there's a screw in the back that you're supposed to screw them onto. But I don't use the screws because I make them into charms. So here's how I do that. It's nice that it has this little thing right here because I wouldn't be able to do it otherwise. So I stick my little plier. All right, so now I got it, it's holding it. And then I just use my hand and I twist it around a couple times. And then I pull it out to the top. Oh, okay. I pull it out to the top. Cut. Make it like flat and then like twist it into a little thing. And I like to put it back in the hole to kind of offer some stability, you know. I think I cut it a little short, but you get the idea. And this should still work. Something like this. Okay, it's a very similar method to make charms out of anything else. I'm going to do the nail, um, which should either be really simple or really hard. So you need to anchor like the start of your wire onto something and then just you'll be able to twist around. So, so I decided to use these two keys, this big one and this small one. And for the small one, I was going to um, attach it to the end of a safety pin and use it as a charm and this one's just gonna be a charm all on its own and I'm just gonna use my six millimeter jump rings I'm going to put the jump ring through the little safety pin hole and then I'm going to put the key through hopefully it will fit um, if not I will have to use wire closed together it is closed now and we have a little charm all right, so I have decided on an arrangement that looks good to me. So I'm going to go without the charms for now and put the charms on at the end. So I'm just gonna connect these. I got some jump rings that are opened up. It, I think it helps to open up your jump rings beforehand, but I got some that are opened up and yeah, just gonna put them together. I'm just connecting each individual section to a jump ring and also to the next section and closing up the jump ring. When it was complete, I held it against my neck and I found out that there were some things that I wanted to change about it, so I'm doing that in this clip. But yeah, just play around with it until you're happy with the way it looks. Okay, so I adjusted it to the point where I am satisfied with how it looks and now I'm going to um, put on the charms. Actually, let's put the clasp on. So I got this clasp. I'm raising it from an old one. And I'm just going to put a jump ring through it. Then I will use this old chain and just... Oh, wait, no, I shouldn't do that. Okay, no, I will. Okay, so I'll put that right here and close it up. Make sure it's closed up well. We're gonna cut this little chain thing short here. So this is also a jump ring. I'm just gonna open it. 
and take this other part out and then I will put this here okay and close it back all right stick for the rest of the chain which will be a form of necklace extender I will use this one okay I have a jump ring on here right so I'm just gonna open that up and put this leftover chain and close the jump ring you can put this on and fasten it onto any one of these right so now the charms i'm going to do the best ones first i think the key one is a really good one this key safety pin one so i'm going to do it on this other side because there's a lot of safety pins over here so i'll put it right here All right, the spike, I'm just going to put it like that. Open up a jump ring. I'm gonna put it right here. It's a similar process for the rest of the charms. Just play around with it like you did with the beads until you find something that you're happy with. All right, it is a few days later and I finally finished. I am so in love with the way it turned out. I love the colors. It just looks so pretty. I hope you found this video useful. And like I said, I'm going to be selling this one. I'm going to be having a mini drop on said shop next month. Uh, look out for that if you're interested. And yeah, that's it for the video. If you are still watching, thank you so much. It means a lot. If you like the video, like the video. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.